It seems to me that the Bentwaters incident is a classic case where an apparent intrusion into our airspace and indeed a landing in our country was witnessed by serious-minded people in the military, responsible people doing a responsible job. And Bentwaters is, in a sense, a benchmark for how not to deal with these matters in the future. I know a good bit about the Bentwaters incident, and I've read uh, half a dozen books. I've interviewed a number of the people who took part in it. And what I have decided, after careful thought, and I have said it in public more than once before, there are only two explanations for what happened that night in Suffolk. The first is that what the people concerned, including Colonel Holt, who was at the time the deputy commander of the base, and a lot of his soldiers, or airmen, they claim that something from outside the Earth's atmosphere landed at their Air Force base. They went and uh, stood by it. They inspected it. They photographed it. The following day they took tests on the weather ground where it had been and found radioactive traces. They reported this. Colonel Holt wrote a memorandum which was sent to our Ministry of Defense. He has appeared on British television at least once to my knowledge possibly more often, in which he has repeated, effectively, what he said in that memorandum. And what he said is what I have just described. That is one explanation that it actually happened, as Colonel Holt reported. The other explanation is that it didn't. And in that case, one is bound to assume that Colonel Holt and all his men were hallucinating. My position is perfectly clear. Either of those explanations is of the utmost defense interest. It has been reported and claimed, and I myself have raised it with ministers at the defense ministry in this country, who deny that anything they have been informed is of defense interest. Surely, to any sensible person, either of those explanations must be cannot fail to be of defense interest, that the colonel of a, an American Air Force base in Suffolk and his merry men are hallucinating when there are nuclear-armed aircraft on the base must be of defense interest. If indeed what he says took place did take place, and why on earth should he make it up, then surely the entry of a vehicle from outer space, certainly not man-made, to a defense base in this country also cannot fail to be of defense interest. And it simply isn't any good, ministers, and the Ministry of Defense in particular, saying that nothing that took place that December night in Suffolk is of defense interest. It simply isn't true. Since my name has become connected with UFO matters in quite a big way in this country, and in one or two other countries too, I have frequently been asked why a person of my background, a former chief of the defense staff, a former chairman of the NATO military committee, why I think there is a cover-up, or what the reasons may be for governments wishing to cover up the facts about UFOs. And a number of explanations have often been put forward, of which the most frequent and perhaps the most plausible is that the governments concerned, which are primarily that of the United States and that of my own country, believe that if they told the truth, which is that there are objects in our atmosphere, which are technically miles in advance of anything that we can deploy, that we have no means of stopping them coming here, and that we have no defense against them should they be hostile, that I believe is because governments fear that if they did disclose those facts, people would panic. People would rush about, jam the switchboard like they did on that famous day in New York when there was a spoof, Martians have landed. People will go mad and they'll jump up and down. I don't believe that at all. I've said so in print. I've said it in the foreword I wrote to one of Timothy Good's books. I do not believe that people today in the 21st century, 
are going to panic at that sort of information. After all, they have put up with the introduction of nuclear weapons, the destruction of two Japanese cities 50 years ago. They put up, not put up with, it's the wrong word, they take as a matter of course that we can land vehicles on Mars. They land to the precise instant forecast years before vehicles on distant planets. Why should they panic? They're much more interested in, in this country in doing the pools or the lottery. They shrug their shoulders and take it as a matter of course. Anyway, they don't trust politicians, in my experience. So I believe that that is the most likely explanation. There are, of course, others, but I, I think I'll have to settle for that. What I'd like to say is that there is a serious possibility that we are being visited and have been visited for many years by people from outer space, from other civilizations that it behoves us, in case some of these people in the future or now should turn hostile, to find out who they are, where they come from, and what they want. This should be the subject of rigorous scientific investigation and not the subject of rubbishing by tabloid newspapers. When we got about a mile from it, as a matter of fact, we were diving on the thing and the whole aircraft was shaking. <laughs> It just took off into space at several thousand miles an hour, almost directly up. And uh, now this was at night. It reminded me a lot of the uh, shuttle launch or something.